All right, so in our last video, we created a method that we called print name, and we called our print name from our main method. Fantastic, except this kind of breaks the rules, uh, if you will, because it says print name, but it's actually getting a name and printing a name. And while I might be kind of uh, splitting hairs here, I think that there's two different there's two different um, two different things going on here, two different tasks. One is getting the name and one is printing the name. And so if we really want to hold true to the fact that we said methods should be single task minded, then let's use this as an example to create a second um, a second uh, method. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to change this one to get name. And so its sole task is to get the name, and then we'll print the name someplace else. So let's do a static void print name. And so in this particular one, print the name, what we're going to do then is we're going to receive the name and we'll print it out. In other words, I'm going to let this method's job be solely to get names, and then this method's job will be to print the information out. So it needs a value. So how are we going to make that happen? Well, let's see. First of all, let's print it out. So I'm going to cut this code and put it into our print name. All right. So now, remember that name is a local variable. That means that I have to get the value from the parameter. From I have to get the value either from the parameter variable name or from within this method itself. As you can see, first of all, name is underlined. It can't see this variable. It's out of scope. It can only see the variables that are available within its method. So I'm going to use the name, which is the variable that I've used to receive the name, coincidentally enough. So the string value that I've received, I've put into the name. And that's the value that I can use here in this line. All right, so how am I going to send this information? Well, let's see. Um, first of all, let's look at what we've got going on. We've got an ugly red squiggly line, and this red egg squiggly line, if I hold my mouse over it, is upset because it says, well, you've created this method called print name that expects to receive a string, but you haven't sent it anything, which is why there's a red squiggly line here. So just for this demonstration, I'm going to put the print line here in get name. So I'm going to call a method from within another method. It's still upset, but at least now I have a value that I can send it. I've gotten some information from the reader, for, from the person using my program, the user. That value got put into this variable. So I can send that data to print name. Everybody's happy because the compiler sees that I'm sending a string. I have to match the data types. This, this method expects to receive a string. So I've satisfied that condition. It puts that value into the name, and then it's going to print that information out. So now I'm sending data back and forth through what we call arguments and parameters. Also want you to recognize that if I tried to write line, again, this is scope. If I tried to write line this variable, write line, the name, I'm going to get an ugly red squiggly line because this variable is out of scope. Remember, it's only available within this method. Once this method finishes, the program can't see the value that's in the name. And so there's a red squiggly line saying, I can't see this variable. I don't know what you're trying to reference here. So we've got an ugly red squiggly line. So let's just get rid of that then. But no worries, because we're printing it from here. So we've sent it. We've sent the method, the data we want to print. It's printing. And then let's see, nothing is calling get name, so let's call get name. Get name says I don't need to send it anything, I'm not receiving anything. So now if I run this code, it should run get name. Get name is going to get the name, put it into the string. Print name is going to run. Let's just for clarity, write line the name printed just for our visualization. And then let's run this and just make sure that it's working the way expected. So again, I'm going to debug it because I want to watch it run so I know how it's working. I'm going to choose debug, start debugging. And if we walk through it, 
There's our console. So get name is going to invoke or go run the lines of code that's in get name. Right line, what is your name, got written to the console. Uh, next, it's reading a line. It's expecting me to type in a name. Let's type in a different name this time. Oh, Stitch seems like a good one. So I can see that Stitch got put into the variable called name. And then it called print name. If I hold my cursor over the variable that says the name, I can see that Stitch, in fact, got sent. I can also see that down here in my local variables, Stitch was put into this particular method, into this variable. So everything should run accordingly. I should be able to print that out. It did print it successfully. That looks good. I'm going to continue to run. So I get back to the last line that invoked this method, which comes back to the print name. We should then see this right, la right line uh, get printed after we step through it. It got printed. And then it's going to return back to, I'm just going to run it out from here. It's going to return back to, yay, thank you back to the main and then it executed accordingly or exited it executed all the commands and exited accordingly so now we've seen uh, debugging in action and now we've also written a method that can receive information and do something with and we explored a little bit uh, the, the scope of variables how long can I see that scope that value in that variable and the fact that I can't see it from outside of that method, that all of those variables are local, can only be seen from within that method.